Lynn, update us on the Mill Creek Park situation, please. Sure. Uh, this week has been really interesting. Um, today is June 4th, 2016, and we just had the resignation of two more park employees, and one of them was an interim uh, finance person, an accounting person, who was uh, replacing the treasurer, Kevin Smith, who resigned. And what I spoke of before in the video previous was about um, different discrepancies uh, in the uh, annual reports and um, possibly, um, you know, record keeping. Um, you know, we need analysis of all of the public records that we've gotten. We do not have expert analysis of all these financial statements, royalty statements, um, balance sheets on all the royalties and the um, different monies that our park has gained uh, from uh, oil and gas uh, businesses. Um, what we're worried about now, of course, is we do not want any further compromising of the park by letting dangerous, volatile frack product pipelines being put under the park. So that is the worst thing that happened as of late. Dennis Miller, Executive Director, Valencia Mero, Jay Maseko, Robert Durick, John Reagan, Louis Schiavone, the uh, park commissioners okayed this pipeline going under the park. And um, you can see throughout the country different uh, ethane ethylene pipelines exploding because this uh, product is very volatile. Uh, the bomb trains that come from the Bakken shale are a good example. It's not like the trains are derailing and exploding. The tankers are going on the rails and exploding on the rails. Is there a chance of this happening in the park itself? Uh, not the uh, trains. Uh, much of the park is in the um, evacuation zone. I can't remember off the top of my head if the evacuation zone is a 10 mile radius from that train track or a 100 mile <laughs> radius. I can't remember at this point. But yeah, a lot of us are in the evacuation zone from the uh, train track that goes through um, Youngstown and these uh, tankers travel regularly through Youngstown. So that's yet another, you know, sad thing. People like to say around here, well, we don't have fracking here, you know, meaning we don't have fracking right in Youngstown. Yes, but we are the dump of the Marcellus uh, shale frack waste. And we have a radioactive uh, frack waste processing center at 240 Center Court. It's IWC Ground Tech. And they're still processing this waste, these uh, partially dissolved solids they're from the Marcellus Shale. Yes, they're down blending in the air. You aren't allowed to down blend out in the open air. You aren't allowed to take radioactive materials. And, you know, it's the evaporated uh, frac fluid, you know, with the radium 226, 228, and strontium and everything in it, and the um, drill cuttings. And what they do is they just mix it with dirt, put it on the roll-offs, and truck it over to Poland Landfill. We've been over this before. The landfill uh, radioactive uh, warnings are going off like crazy. And the Vindicator printed it was, you know, medical waste. So we have the records. We have the public records that show K6 enemies list and allies list. And the ally listed that um, helps him promote fracking in Ohio and you know putting fracking under the parks in Ohio it states right on this document the Youngstown Vindicator so is it any wonder we don't get any facts that we bring out mm -hmm. from these uh, public record searches printed in our own paper I mean it's been covered in you know Columbus papers Akron papers other papers what's going on here but not in our own paper. Oh, yeah, it's in the Akron paper all the time. Right, it's been silenced here. Now, I understand <clears throat> once that material is in the landfill, it's actually turning those landfills into low-level nuclear reactors. Yeah, little breeder things, because um, 
breeder reactors because the progeny of the, the radioactive decay uh, is, that happens, you know, I'm not a radioactive expert, but we listened to Dr. Julie Weatherington Rice, who is the radioactive uh, frack waste expert, and she's located at the Ohio State University, and everyone should call up her video on YouTube and look at her most current work. And we had her speak at YSU about the danger of this stuff being hauled to the landfill. Bit by bit, it piles up and it just builds, it like multiplies. That's the nature of uh, radioactive elements. It's her video like, is in the library too. Yes, and everybody needs to watch that because we're creating a waste stream that is so dangerous. I mean, when there is a form of energy you know, that creates waste that will kill us. I mean, everybody knows, you know, the nuclear industry, they cut back on because we can't dispose of all those spent fuel rods. So now here we're bringing it up from underground. And granted, it's a lot less radioactive than fuel rods, but this stuff is being transported through our neighborhoods. It's the particles are going into the air if they're down blending. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission declared down blending illegal. They're doing it in Youngstown. <laughs> I mean, give me a break. So what we did today, we had the Riverfest display. We had a big map of all the um, disaster areas, all of the danger areas where all the frack tanker cleaning stations are throughout the city where all the earthquakes have happened, whether from uh, frack wells in Poland, the suburb of Youngstown, or the um, injection well right down there on uh, Ohio Works Drive. We have a big map with everything charted. So many people got to see that, many people got to read their Youngstown Community Bill of Rights so they know what exactly it's written for to protect our health, to protect our drinking water, to protect our homes, and to protect our park. And um, the, the most revolting developments are people have gotten their water bills with their consumer confidence reports of the tests done on the water inserted into our water bills. And we're starting to compare, you know, what's going on, the trihalomethanes, the last test was September 2015, I think we need to be, you know, catching up on do we still have trihalomethanes in our water that are above the safe limit to drink? And we have a uh, bromated something element coming in on the um, MVSD water, same water source, but different town. The McDonald um, water tests, the consumer confidence report tests, are listing different elements and if it's related to bromide I mean bromides come up from the fracking wastewater come up with the fracking wastewater and when they hit the chlor chlorine in the uh, water processing plant it creates different bromated compounds so this needs investigated people can't sit around and feel that they're protected anymore. They can't feel that, oh, you know, the EPA is protecting us or our water uh, providers are protecting us. No, we need to ask the hard questions. Now, what are some of the specific health concerns? Cancer <clears throat> is the main one. I mean, that's definitely the main one is getting cancer from these chemicals. So that's uh, most every one of these fracking chemicals, you know, xylene, uh, bethylenzene, or whatever that is, toluene, uh, all of the benzene uh, compounds that are in these frack chemicals are known carcinogens for humans. And they just keep using them and they keep, you know, coming out of the ground because the waste comes back up. Mm -hmm. and they have to dispose of it in injection wells. It's ridiculous. You and don't those need we're seeing this. all over the place. All over the place. And look at the floods in Texas that have spread those chemicals everywhere when they hit the old wells and the old injection wells. Exactly. So massive, widespread pollution everywhere. Yes. Okay, we are at our limit for this video. We will continue next time.
Thank you.